How's it going everyone? It's Sam. There are some bombshells about BlackRock you need to know. Some information you probably don't know. And honestly, it might change your viewpoint on Bitcoin right now. And it's not bearish, it's just how things go. We're also going to take a look at some of the news in the market, some opportunities in the market. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on that bell notification underneath the video to see future videos just like this as soon as I make them. There's also a link to Margex underneath the video in case you want to start leverage trading. You can do it on Margex. They also have this new convert function where you can convert your cryptos into stables or into Bitcoin. So definitely check that out. There's also a deposit bonus that can be used towards fees for the first couple of weeks as well. There's also a link to CoinW in case you want to try some other website. This is one of the largest uh, platforms in the world. They have spot trading. They have futures trading. Definitely one that you should be using if you're not using already. And there are a bunch of bonuses underneath uh, when you use that link. Now, let's start with the the news that just broke. CPI 0.4% month over month. The expectation was 0.3%. Core was 0.4%. The expectation 0.3%. So CPI was right at 3.5 versus 3.4. Core 3.8 versus 3.7 year over year. So obviously higher than expectations not great either because at one point we were falling down and sometimes we would still be above expectations but we were still coming down here we're going up from 3.2 i believe it was last month to 3.5 so really not a good situation but we've been just floating between three and four percent in my mind there might be a time where the fed just says we're not going to get down to two percent right around three percent we're okay with starting to cut rates i could be wrong I could be wrong, but I would not be surprised if they just cut by like a quarter percent at some point and then waited a little bit longer and then cut by another quarter percent and saw how that was affecting the market. But at this point, yeah, the market is taking it pretty bad. As you can see here, Bitcoin falling from 69,500 to 67,700. And honestly, I don't think it really affects Bitcoin at all in the long term, but short term, it is going to affect the price of Bitcoin. Everything has to be repriced because rate cuts are less likely now. We did get some bullish news here. Hong Kong is poised is poised to approve Asia's first spot Bitcoin ETF. And that's happening this month. The first approvals are likely to be announced next week, according to people familiar with the matter. Obviously, Hong Kong very bullish on Bitcoin. And it is interesting after China literally banned Bitcoin miners a few years ago. Obviously, Hong Kong is somewhat part of China, but kind of separate as well. But obviously, this is an innovation hub, and yeah, people want access to Bitcoin. People saw Bitcoin 4x this year, and they're a little bit jealous of the gains. Who, who wouldn't be, right? Now, we did get some updated inflow numbers. Yesterday, GBTC had a $155 million outflow. Grayscale lost another 2,250 Bitcoin. They have 316,000 Bitcoin remaining almost half of what they had about three months ago. ArcB, zero inflows. BITB, only 4 million. IBIT, 129 million. So big day for Bla uh, for BlackRock, or pretty good day. I guess not huge compared to what we've seen in the past, but kind of middle of the road. 21 million uh, needed for a net positive day, and Fidelity came in with only 3 million. DeFi, the new spot, Bitcoin ETF, only 1 million, and then BTCO and BRRR, zero. So it was actually a net outflow day. And I thought, okay, well, let's take a look at BlackRock and see, like, what are they talking about on their homepage? And one of the first things that they, like, one of the first articles that pop up is this demographic divergence. And they're talking about how uh, this, basically, the aging populations in major economies could shake up the markets. Now, what do they say exactly? What kind of investment implications do they have? They think that the dispersion of outcomes will create plentiful investment opportunities. We believe the key for investors is to be selective and assess what markets have priced in these kinds of demographic shifts. Research finds, uh, finds that they can be slow to price in the impact of even predictable demographic shifts. That looks to be the case now in the US and Europe and is why we like the healthcare sector in both of these regions. Okay. Uh, they also talk about emerging markets. Now, I thought they might be talking about Bitcoin at this point. We know a lot of younger people like cryptocurrency. They're going to be passed down a lot of wealth. But there's no mention of Bitcoin or crypto on this page. Then I looked 
I just search Bitcoin. And there are four articles. There's obviously the trust here. Only four articles talking about Bitcoin. One from two and a half months ago, one from last year around this time, one from a year before that, and then one from two years, bef three years before that. So they only have four articles on Bitcoin. And the CEO has gone on live TV talking about Bitcoin. So what the heck's happening here? Well, I kind of think about it as they have this new ETF. It's super successful, but it's not like they're pushing it to a bunch of people right now. And we know out of everyone that could buy it, right? There are a couple of significant groups, maybe the people like you and me, maybe hedge funds, home offices, right? People that have a little bit more leeway, they can do pretty much what they want. They're managing maybe their own money or uh, it's a smaller, it's a smaller company and they can move a little bit more nimbly. But then you have the big money, like the institutions, pensions, they take a while to approve. You have financial advisors through maybe, I don't know, Edward Jones, and they take a while to approve things too. They're not selling these yet. We know just last month that BlackRock was having a meeting for their high net worth individuals. They brought in a quant analyst uh, talking about Bitcoin and you know what makes sense for portfolio allocation. Just last week, uh, Anthony Pompliano had the head of digital assets um, from BlackRock uh, at a speaking convention, and he said maybe one to three percent allocation. But keep in mind, they're barely pushing this to the normal people right now. Like you can't get through your financial advisors unless you really know what you're doing. You're probably not going on Fidelity because it's not like they're it's not like they're pushing it to everyone possible that you should go buy Bitcoin. But over time, that's likely to happen. They've posted multiple papers talking about how Bitcoin's the best performing asset. I think it just takes time. We have to remember, it does take time for these types of things to happen. And if you look up, what was it? In one of these articles, uh, I I clicked on it and it said that you could go to like the, the new ETF prospectus. It's 202 pages long and it's, it's not easy. It's like... Uh, Business risk factors, unresolved staff comments, cybersecurity, properties, legal proceedings, mine safety, disclosures, and that's just the first 67 pages. Like this is not a one page paper that's super easy to understand. And of course they have that too, but this is not for the masses yet. This is not for everyone to understand what Bitcoin is. This is for people to really dive deep into it if they're at a company. And this takes time, right? 200 pages of a new asset class they have to they have to go through now something that i didn't even realize uh this this is a really good video uh from aperture talking about blackrock and how they control the world's governments i didn't realize that this was actually started just 36 years ago in new york by larry fink i didn't know that larry fink was actually the one of the founders of BlackRock. They've become the largest money manager in the world in less than 40 years. I assumed, I, I wrongfully assumed, that this was a mall, like a hundred year old company because a lot of the banks are hundreds of years, a lot of the money managers are old money too. They've taken the world by storm in less than 40 years. And how do they do that? Well, they pushed their own narratives. They pushed ESG. They managed money for some of the most uh, wealthy pensions in the world. They continue to be cutthroat. And they are posting about changing demographics. They're talking about investment opportunities. Obviously, if there's money to be made, they're going to push it. They're going to basically force people to buy. And what they've been putting a lot of their time behind recently, what was Larry Fink been talking about every time he goes on live TV? Bitcoin. But again, you can only push so hard. You need to make sure that your clients understand it. You need to make sure that they passed it through compliance. But this is probably the best way for them to make tons of money. I mean, they're $10 trillion, right? If they can buy significant amounts of Bitcoin and Bitcoin goes up to a $10 trillion market cap, that might be the easiest way for them to actually add a trillion dollars onto their already $10 trillion portfolio. So I think they're going to continue to push it, but it does take time, right? So just a little bit about BlackRock there. Uh, let's move on though. Some different opportunities in the market. EC, they're going live tomorrow. 
they have their token listing. They're listing on a lot of different platforms. One is KuCoin. Uh, I think this is going to be really big. I, I've talked about this a handful of times. It's starting at 10 UTC. Of course, always do your own due diligence, but I've already heard that's trading for like 40 to 50 X on OTC markets. Like people are super excited about this and I've been talking about it for months at this point. Uh, you can see pretty large Twitter following too with 400,000 followers. A lot of people that I follow as well. So be on the lookout for this. I'm guessing it will be uh, all over Twitter tomorrow, but I could be wrong, of course. It's also listing on Bybit as well at the same time. So again, lots of listings tomorrow, lots of different places that's gonna be tradable. So uh, by the way, on these, be careful because a lot of the time they'll pump up right when they list and then they'll fall down. And that might be when you wanna get in is once it's already come down a bit. Of course, so you don't know how high it's gonna go. Uh, if you can snipe it like right when it lists, sometimes that can be good too. Katamoto, I've talked about this a few times. It is the meme coin coming from Tencent. So they are um, launching here very soon as well. You can see they're launching on BSC pad, the number one, the cat meme coin posed to redefine crypto standards backed by a perfect collaboration of industry giants. Uh, you can also see here, you can sign up for the whitelist and get your Katamoto tokens. Sale is April 15th at 11 a.m. UTC. So I'd go follow this. Of course, you don't have to buy anything you don't want to, but they are gonna list on Ape Terminal. Ape Terminal's had so many big listings. Uh, I would not be surprised if this did pretty well too. Obviously, meme coins have just been absolutely insane this cycle. So this is something that I'll probably be buying into as well. And Reddit token. Uh, I've talked about this a handful of times too, but they've done pretty well recently on the based on the Reddit IPO. It's a meme coin that here they compare. This is just kind of crazy. When you think about like smaller meme coins, a couple million dollar market caps, even if you're not looking at Reddit coin in general, but you're just looking at different meme coins around that level. Like if any of them do pop to Dogecoin's level, it's a 3,654X. I'm not saying that's gonna happen, of course, because uh, most meme coins will not get to Doge's level, but some of them will go up to a billion dollars, uh, 500 million. And that's where, you know, you see people flexing their new watches, their new Lamborghinis and stuff like that. And that is bound to happen this bull market. So I know some people are just kind of spreading their capital around 10, 20 different meme coins and just letting it ride. Not sure if that's something you want to do, but I do have a position in Reddit coin as well. Now, let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. Again, I think BlackRock is going to push these Bitcoin ETFs, but it's just starting. Like this is very new and they need to get people on their side before they start pushing everyone to buy it, right? But think about what they did with ESG. This was barely mentioned on conference calls before they start pushing that everyone had to be environmentally friendly. Then everyone was talking about it. It was a requirement to even have ESG in certain funds, right? So it will be interesting to watch. I think this is just the beginning. And when you consider where Bitcoin is, I know we had a bad CPI print. We were just at 73K. Now we're at 67K. Some people are a little bit pissed off. But we're at the highest level we've ever been, like within a couple percent. And this is before the Bitcoin halving. This is ahead of rate cuts. This is when these ETFs are just starting to sell. Uh, and they've accumulated a lot of Bitcoin. But They've basically just taken it off of OTC desks. They're very dry right now. I think we're in a good place. And we're going to see undulations. Is that is that the right way to say it? We're going to see some volatility because it, it crushes longs and shorts, really aggressive ones. But eventually, I think we all know where this asset's going. Now, if you're bullish, maybe you want to put on a long, a low leverage long or a little bit more aggressive long, you can check out the link underneath the video to Marjex or to CoinW. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.